Hello, welcome to another video. In this video, I am going to continue the humerus, its parts. Now, the shaft. This is shaft is the cylindrical part. It consists of three surfaces and three border. The first, this is the anterior border, which continues from the inferior aspect of the greater tubercle, which continues downwards. If it comes lower one third, it is not so well defined. But this, the anterior border continues downwards in the lower end with the lateral edge of the trochlea. This is the lateral aspect. Now the posterior aspect of greater tubercles, which upper one third of the shaft shows ill-defined but as it comes down in the lower two-third it becomes prominent and it continues with the lower end epicondyles this border in the lower one-third shows sharp edge is called supracondylar ridge let us turn rotate towards the medial medial border we may consider from the inferior aspect of lesser tubercle so slight marked ridge but again in intermediate it is a faint once it comes to the lower two-third it again shows the marked sharp edge and it is continuous with the medial supracondylar ridge and to the epicondyle the epicondyle this is the epicondyle this borders divide shaft into three surfaces this is anteromedial surface this is anterolateral surface on the anterolateral surface junction between upper one third and lower two third it shows V-shaped small rough projection is called a deltoid tubercle. At the level of deltoid tubercle, on posteriorly or anteromedially, there are foramina which is directed downward called Newton foramina. This is anteromedial surface which lies in between the anterior border and medial border. This is posterior surface which lies in between medial border and lateral border. Now let us discuss in the lower end of the humerus. Lower end of the humerus consists of two epicondyles, medial epicondyle, lateral epicondyle and articular surface and three fossa two on front and one on behind medial epicondyle is the larger which continues from the medial supracondylar ridge inferiorly it faints with the lateral surface of the trochlea and lateral epicondyle which is here is the smaller than the medial epicondyle it continues from the lateral supracondylar ridge on anterior surface above the articular surface there are two fossa medial fossa is called coronoid fossa because because this fossa on full flexed at elbow joint gives laws made for the coronoid process of ulna Laterally, there is a smaller fossa on full flexed at elbow joint. It gives loss vein for the head of the radius. On posteriorly, again above the articular surface, there is a larger one triangular fossa is called olecranon fossa because this fossa gives loss vein for the olecranon process of ulna. Now, Articular surface in articular surface of lower end 
there are two we can say immediately who shows like a pulley is called trochlea laterally its a rounded articular surface is called capitulum capitulum and trochlea are separated by a groove small groove which i which is over here now let us discuss about the trochlea trochlea in its intermediate there is a groove which dividing into two flanges this is called medial flange and this is called lateral flange medial flange is a deeper and larger of almost 6 mm from the lateral ends this is the reason in case of female on extent of elbow joint forms a larger carry angle than male now this is the capitulum capitulum is the rounded spherical which uh, unflexed the head of the radius does not articulate with the capitulum whereas an unextend extend elbow joint 